Once upon a time, there was a wonderful king that ruled a kingdom. The king was always doing fine and wonderful things for his people. The people desired in their hearts to worship and to glorify the king and his wonderful deeds. So the king planned appointed times each year, special times, celebrations, to tell the stories of the king's deeds to all the people and their children and to glorify the king. The king wrote detailed instructions of how to observe these times for many years the people enjoyed these celebrations and appointed times. Each year they would learn more about their king and draw closer to him. They realized the king's celebrations were not only to tell stories of the things the king had done for them in the past, but foreshadows of more things that the king was planning to do for them in the future. There was another kingdom, however, that did not worship the king. They worshiped objects such as statues, animals, trees, and the sun. And in this other kingdom, the people practiced several different annual parties that glorified the people themselves and objects instead of the king. This continued for many years until the most recent generations forgot all about the king and all about the things that the king had planned to glorify himself in his wonderful deeds for all the people. One day, a man was reading the book of the king's words, and he came across the part that told all about the king's appointed times each year, special times for celebrations, to tell the stories about who the king was and all that he had done for them, about the deeds to tell their children and to glorify the king. The man was so excited, and he went to tell all the people about these wonderful celebrations. But this made the people very angry. They felt that the man was condemning them for the traditions that they had innocently done all their lives. They did not understand. The man was sad and he decided to keep the king's celebrations in his own family. The man's family learned much about the king. In fact, each year the man and his family grew closer and closer to the king because of the wonderful stories they learned about during these celebrations. The man and his family learned that they had many more fine things uh, that the king was planning for them. That man wanted so much to share these stories with others. Even though the man was continually rejected, he continued to tell everyone about the king's celebrations. After a while, a few other families who had always felt uncomfortable about these annual parties that they had kept listened to the man. Soon, many people returned to celebrate the king's appointed times, worshiping the king and telling stories about the king generation to generation. And this made the king very happy. I want to welcome you to Miami Valley Church. My name is Pastor Jed, and if this is your first time joining, you, joining us, I want to just say welcome I hope that you're in a, a house church surrounded by friends, surrounded by family, and you are enjoying community. If you are not, and if you are just uh, finding yourself today just watching, would you reach out to us? We want to connect with you, and we want to connect you uh, with people, with, with friends in a house church to experience community together. And so would you reach out to us at start at miamivalley.org, and we want to connect you with people. Reminder, next Sunday, Palm Sunday, April the 10th, we will not be having an online broadcast of the message. I repeat, next Sunday, there will not be a broadcast of the message online. We are encouraging all of you, all families, all house churches, everyone to come and join us in the celebration of Palm Sunday next Sunday, April the 10th at the Hilton Garden Inn at Austin Landing in Miami. So we're encouraging everyone to be a part of that day. Doors will open at 1045 a.m. AM. We will come in, uh, we will gather together, and we will greet and, and just fellowship with each other, and then we will share a meal with that shortly after. We are looking forward to seeing each and every one of you there, sharing in what God has been doing, is doing, and praising Him together. If you haven't RSVP'd yet, please do that today. Let us know so we can have a heads up of who is coming, uh, especially for the meal. And so would you let us know about that? You can RSVP right now by going to our website, miamivalley.org. It's right there on our front page. Very easy. Just click RSVP and just put in the names of you and your family who, who will be attending that day. And we are so excited uh, to just see everyone. You can also go to our website, miamivalley.org, to catch up on any of the messages that you have missed, to watch them again, to study deeper. Uh, you heard last week from Pastor Laurent Mavunian. He did such an incredible job uh, just sharing with with us about not misusing the name of the Lord, your God. And I hope that you've been thinking about that and meditating on that as you have went throughout this week. Pastor Laurent challenged us 
to think about not conforming to the culture that's around us, but to present God to the culture that's around us. We are not to conform, but we are to present God to the culture that's around us. And Pastor Laurent and his community of faith will be joining us next week as we uh, just celebrate in this time together, Palm Sunday, and praise the name of the Lord together. If you are just joining us for the first time today, we have been going through it all, through all of God's word together. And here we find ourselves in this wilderness section of scripture. And so if you have your Bibles with you today, we're gonna be jumping back into Exodus 20. Go there now, Exodus 20, whether you have a physical copy or maybe it's on a mobile device go to exodus 20 right now and we're going to be picking back up in verse 8 let's look at what that says verse 8 exodus 20 remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days you shall labor and do all your work but on the seventh day it is a sabbath day to the lord your god on it you shall do no you shall do you shall not do any work or your son, or your daughter, or your, fe- or your male servant, or your female servant, or your livestock, or your sojourner, who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So that is what the Lord Uh, He commands. It's the command that he gives us. But in order for us to dig into the Sabbath and and what that means, uh, I want you to think about rhythm. We first need to talk about rhythm. And maybe you're listening today and you're like, what does rhythm have anything to do with this? What is rhythm? For the purpose of this purpose of this teaching, I need you to think about uh, the regularly reoccurring sequence of events, actions, and processes in your life. Think about, think about your life this morning. Have you ever thought about the rhythm of your life? Why do you do the things you do at the days and times that you do them, and why do you keep doing them? Do you see the pattern, the the rhythm? Have you ever thought about the rhythm of your life? How would you define the rhythm of your own life? Let me help you out here. Who is that, that person in your life that you see maybe just once a year? And for the past five years, you've seen them consecutively uh, once every year. And every time they ask you, hey, how are you doing? What's, what's going on in your life? And every time you're just like, man, I am busy. If you have said that every year and you say that, Uh, consecutively just over and over and over again that's probably the rhythm of your life you're probably busy your life is probably chaotic just going one thing to the next to the next to the next and you never have a second to breathe that would be the rhythm of your life now let me ask you who set that rhythm in your life who is the one who set that rhythm from the very first words in the bible god shows us this rhythm that he set from the beginning let's look at genesis uh, chapter 2 It says, so the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. The creator himself, he created everything. He breathed everything into existence. For six days he created, and on the seventh it said, he rested. He set this rhythm for us. Every day prior, we get to see him uh, just being in creation, creating. And, And then on the seventh day, it says he rested for six days. And then boom. Day seven, it says he stopped. Why Why is that so important as we talk about Sabbath today? Why is it that when we hear about Sabbath or really any of the commands that we've been going through, why is it that our, our initial reaction is to think of them as a restriction or not allowing us to do something? Why is that our first reaction? The command of the Sabbath, God tells us to stop. He says, just stop. Whatever you're doing, the pace that you're going at, just stop. And this this stop, it is not a punishment. I want you to get that uh, in your head today. This stop, this Sabbath, this rest that he is calling us to, it is not a punishment, but it is a gift. Our God has given us a gift. He says, stop whatever you're doing. Pause. Just take a moment right now to just hit stop. This is a gift. It's not a punishment. If your boss came to you, 
And he said, hey, I want you to stop working on Fridays. I know that you typically work Monday through Friday, but I'm just going to tell you to stop. Stop working on Fridays. Go home. Be with your family. Remember who I am and what I've done for you. Would your reaction be to just uh, get upset because you don't get to work on Fridays anymore? Why is it our reaction when our God, the Lord our God says, hey, stop. Take a moment in life. I know that uh, you've been working all this week and and you've been doing uh, this, 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 but just stop what you're doing. Just take a moment and reflect on who I am and what I have done for you. I want you to rest. He is the shepherd who, who tells us to rest. So why is it our reaction to think of it as a restriction or a punishment? Jesus himself said that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Every day is to be holy unto God. Our Father does not want his children divided on focusing on a day. He wants them united, focusing on Christ. Whatever day you observe uh, as a day of your family worship and rest is between you and God. Enjoy it as a day of rest for family worship and strengthening relationships. Let it bring unity and focus to your home. Do not miss that today. The home is so essential, and we're going to be looking at that as we go along. Isaiah forty or Isaiah 58, verse 13 tells us, the Sabbath is to be a delight and a joy. Why do we think of it as a restriction? It is to be a delight and a joy. That's what Isaiah tells us. God intended the Sabbath to be more than just a day off after six days of work. The Sabbath is a day when we rest, when we rebuild our emotional, physical, and spiritual resources. The Sabbath is a day to stop what we are doing at the pace we are going and to enjoy God. Enjoy the Lord our God. Let me repeat that. The Sabbath was designed as a day to enjoy our God, our Creator, and His creation. God declared it, Christ declared it is finished, not only from the cross, but at creation, telling us that we cannot add anything to what God has done for us. So we are able to rest in God's finished work. And for most of us, that's part of the problem. We just don't know how to rest well. Even when we get the opportunity uh, to rest from the busyness of life, we cram everything we can into that and we think that we are resting and we and family, we are not. How many of us are guilty at getting a moment in the day and, and sitting down to what we would consider rest and we turn on one screen to watch a show, but as we turn on that one screen, we pull up another screen on our phone and by the time uh, we know it, it's midnight or it's one o'clock, it's 2 a.m. and we haven't rested at all and we've just been so busy cramming ourselves with all of this useless information and, and just things in front of us to keep us busy when we thought we were resting and friends, we are dead tired. That is not rest, but God calls us. He commands us to rest and to rest in him. So what does that look like? What does that mean? Um, are we able to just stay in bed all day and just, just sleep all day? No. The Lord, uh, to rest in the Lord is to submit to his perfect will and believe in the promise that he has made. Let me say that again. To rest in the Lord is to submit to his perfect will and believe in the promise that he has made. So maybe that's the question for you today. The situation that you're walking through, have you ever taken it before the Lord? Who has who has seen it all? He has seen from beginning to end already. He has seen everything that is that has happened, that is happening, and that will happen. He is all knowing, all powerful. Have you brought it before him? Are you able to rest in the truth that he is sovereign, that he is in control of everything? Is it hard for you? to submit to his perfect will being done at just the right time. His timing is perfect. Is it hard for you to submit to that today? And so what does resting look like? God has specific ways that he wants us to serve him and worship him. And we get to see how we can walk in these by reading God's word. By the way, let me just hit pause right there and just say this week should have been special for you. At the end of last year, we encouraged you to get into God's word, to meditate in it daily, but also to just intake all of God's word. And so we said, hey, 
from the end of last year till uh, till Easter this year, it's about 90 days. We want you to intake all of God's Word, and that's literally spending about 20 minutes of just listening to God's Word. There's all types of, of reading plans out there where you can just hit play, you can speed it up, and you can just listen to all of God's Word. And, and this week, uh, I've heard from many of you saying, hey, I just completed listening to all of God's Word in 90 days, and maybe it was the first time for some of you. What an incredible 90 days spending just hearing all of God's word, the entire story uh, just laid out before you. And for some of you, like I said, it was the first time that you've really just heard all of the story together. And I just want to congratulate you and say, don't let it stop here. You have you have built this rhythm now as you've, as you've disciplined yourself at listening and being intentional about listening to God's word. And so don't let it stop here. For those of you who maybe started and you just stop for whatever reason. Pick it up, keep going. It's not about it's not about finishing it in 90 days. It's about being intentional. It's about hearing and getting into God's word and just spending time with him. Pick it back up. He desires to be with you. And maybe you're the one listening today and you're like, that's crazy. I can never do it. Start now. Start now. It's just literally just starting and being intentional about, hey, today I'm devoting this. This time right now is going to be intentional to just be in God's word. Start now, friends. Start now. Don't let it end here. As God invites us to join him, we want to be ready. We want to be prepared. And that's what we've been talking about. Being prepared is being in God's word. And for us to know what he wants, we must know his voice. And in order to know his voice, we must listen when he speaks. And for us to listen, we must spend time with him. That's why it is so important to be in his word, to know his voice, and to spend time with him. Looking at God's word, he gives us specific ways that, that he wants us to serve him and worship him. And we get to see how we can walk in those ways by reading his word. Jeremiah 6, it says, this is what the Lord says, stop at the crossroads and look around. As for the old God, ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. Unfortunately, these old paths, they have been paved over by man's influences, opinions, traditions, and interpretations of interpretations of interpretations of interpretations. And sometimes, like the holidays and the commands that we've been going through, they are simply ignored. As Christians, we can learn so much from the biblical Hebrews, strong family worship lifestyle. Look at this. Everything in, in their, their lifestyle, it was centered around the home, whether it be family or education or worship. Everything, every area of the Hebrew worldview is entirely saturated and encompassed with God. The Hebrews make no distinction between their spiritual life and the physical areas of life. They see all of life as God's domain. Everything that happened is an opportunity to praise him, and we can learn so much from that. He is in control of everything, both pains and joys. God's word explains this Hebrew reasoning in Psalm 16, verse 8. It says, I have set the Lord always before me. I have set the Lord always before me. Proverbs 3, 6 says, seek his will in all you do, his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take as we read scripture and study it. There uh, were times for temple worship. However, most of the worship was centered around the home and family. Isn't this exactly what God has been showing us? How important the home is? He's been showing us that it has to start right here in our hearts and it has to be in our homes. If, if we were able uh, to, if you were able to visit a religious Jewish home on a typical Friday, you would find uh, everyone in the home hurrying uh, in the this, in this state of preparation for the uh, coming Sabbath, setting a fine table and a special meal, a set apart meal. But at sundown, all the hurrying stops. It hits pause. The mother of the home prays and dedicates a special day into God and lights the Sabbath candles and begins the Sabbath. The father leads the family in prayers and readings and singing and praise and worship. And he prays a special blessing over the children in the home. All of this taking place in the home. The rest of the 24 hours is spent resting 
and join family, growing spiritually as individuals, growing as a family and closer together in this family unit in the home. Do you see how important the home is? Family, we should ask ourselves, as we as we hear this, is there a time if someone entered our home that they would see such devotion to God? Maybe let me ask it this way. How ashamed should we be when those who don't even know Jesus as the Messiah show such devotion? We talked about how God wants us, uh, all of us, and not just a part of it. Remember, Pastor, I gave the illustration of the pie pan. And I want you to think about your life. How do you divide it up? What are the what are the slices of your life? You would probably have a slice for work or a slice for school, depending on what age you are. You would probably have a slice for fun. You would probably have a slice for home life. And then uh, just the little crumbles that are left, that's God's, right? Uh, everything else has its own slice, but whatever is left, just the, the scraps, the, the crumbles, whatever is left, that is God's. Friends, in the home, each person in the family uh, typically are, are going all their their separate ways and we see this and we see this even in the church we see that the only family time spent together is in the ride uh, to church and from church and then upon arrival right as the church doors we see uh, the family separate where the children go here and um, the the adults go here and uh, they they spend time apart and there's never this time of where a family comes together uh, to just be together let alone worship together or pray together and we see that just how separated it is and then the family comes back together they get in the car they don't even talk about what they learn together or or grow spiritually together but by studying scripture and the rhythm that god has set we get a taste of the almost forgotten family worship Worship led in our homes, teaching our children's, te- teaching our children God's word. Deuteronomy six, right? We're, we're teaching the next generation about who He is and everything He has done with our family, praising God, learning His ways, growing in Him, and sharing a meal. Doing all this together in our home. This is what God commands us to do. Do not miss that today. The problem is, is when we. Uh, when the Sabbath becomes routine and ritual and we forget why we're even doing it or most importantly, who we're even doing it for. The Pharisees were so devoted to God's law and they prided themselves on denying everything that was impure and ungodly and their zeal for God's law. What happened was is they started adding things to God's law. God commanded, remember what we just looked at in Exodus 20 in verse 8, he says, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work but on the seventh day, this is the Sabbath, to the Lord your God, on it, you shall not do any work. But the rabbis added uh, 40 different uh, commands to this, uh, whether it was uh, not tying a knot or lighting a fire or sewing or so many other things that they added to this that they could not do on the Sabbath. And that's when we run into problems. Matthew 15, uh, Jesus says, their worship, talking about the Pharisees, their worship is a farce. For they teach man-made ideas as God, as commands from God. And so here is how our mindset goes from seeing it as almost a punishment or a restriction instead of its intended purpose, a gift. The substitution of human law for divine law made God's instruction a per, uh, a burden rather than rest, right? He wants to give us rest. Remember, the Sabbath was, was to be a delight, to be a joy, but yet we see it as a burden when we start adding things to it and see it as a ritual and routine. Jesus says in Matthew 5, uh, he says, don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until the purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So the question we've been asking as we go through these commandments is, what do we do with it? What do we do with it? Do 
And I, I don't want you to miss what Jesus has said. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear. And so even though Jesus came to accomplish them, we are not to neglect the laws. Isaiah 66 says, As surely as my new heavens and earth will remain, so will you always be my people with a name that will never disappear, says the Lord. All humanity will come to worship me from week to week and from month to month. Friends, there is that rhythm and it will always be. God said it from the very beginning and God will continue that rhythm as we read right there in Isaiah 66. Do you see that? Remember back with me uh, what the Lord says as soon as he delivered them out of Egypt, out of slavery. He says the very first thing he says to them is change your calendar. You have been going, you have been living by this rhythm under slavery for 430 years. Now I am rescuing you. I am going to be your God. And the first thing that I want you to do is change your calendar. This is going to be your new rhythm. I know that at this point, at this point, at this point in in uh, a year, you have all of these things that you've been living under, but I want you to change your rhythm, get out of that habit, get out of that routine. I want to be the Lord your God, and this is how I want you to live. You are, we are to study it, to do it, and to teach it. He says, read my word and spend time with me. Live it out by stopping and resting in the truth that I am God. Praise my name, worship me, and be obedient, and teach those in your home. Teach those who I have placed around you. Tell them about who I am and all that I have done for you. Hebrews 4, 1 through 13, God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared, this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter that rest. As for others, God said, in my anger, I took an oath, they will never enter my place of rest. Even though this rest has been already uh, ready, he made uh, since he made the word the world, we know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions on the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua has succeeded in giving him, giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of this rest still to come. So there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes all it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. Wow. Just like the promised land God has told his people about, God has promised a place for us. He wants us to spend an eternity with him. And this place is called heaven. And we can rest knowing that he alone is the Lord. But in order to enter that place of rest, we must turn back to him. We must turn back to him, family, to accept the gift of salvation to the grace that he has given us by faith in his one and only son, Jesus Christ, our rescuer, our redeemer, our savior. How is your rhythm today? Friends, are you worn out? Are you dead tired? Have you ever stopped to think about who he is? 
to praise his holy name? Are you just uh, bad at resting? Are you bad at just stopping? Are you bad at just getting out of the busyness? Are you bad at just at just hitting pause to worship him by being obedient, to rest in the truth and the promise that he gives us? Are you able to rest today, believing that he is coming back for us? As you heard that passage today, I want to ask you the same question. As you hear his voice, do not harden your heart today. Will you turn back to him? And will you believe in the truth of who he is and the promise that he has given us? Let's pray today. Almighty, sovereign, powerful, everlasting, alpha and omega, awesome, beautiful in all your ways. God, your thoughts are way above our thoughts. And you tell us through your word. You say, I am the Lord, your God. And this is how I want you to live as freed people. To stop in all the busyness of life throw out the old way of living. I want to set your calendar. From the very beginning, God, you set that rhythm for us to work and to delight in that work. But stop and pause and remember who you are. You are God, unlike any other, to praise you, to brag about who you are, and God, to to tell about everything that you have done for us to share with those in our home and to those you've put around us. God, this is what you command of us. And so I pray right now, God, as we wrestle with the rhythm of our life and just how we have gotten so far off track, how we have hardened our hearts, God, I pray right now that as we hear your voice, speaking to hearts right now, God, that we would not harden them, that we would turn back to you and rest in the truth of who you are and the promise that you give. Father, for the one who has never said yes to you, I pray right now that they would just rest in that, acknowledging that they cannot do it on their own, God, but just receiving that gift that you have given us the gift of your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for our sins as our rescuer, as our substitute sufferer, as our Savior. May they say yes to you, resting, and be able to enter into the land that you are desiring for us to be in for an eternity with you in a place called heaven. God, I pray that they would say yes to you today. God, may we be obedient to follow in the paths that you put before us, in the ways in which you want your people, freed people, no longer bound under the burden of sin, to live. God, may we be obedient. And may we be obedient to spend time with you, to have a heart that desires the truth of your word, to hear your voice. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.